What are cryptocurrencies? Hey, hey, hey. What are NFTs? A non-fungible token. Time to buy Bitcoin. Bitcoin just seems like a scam. What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, Bitcoin! Hello everyone and welcome back to On The Ledger. This is your host Moel Said, back once again on your weekly rendezvous from Paris. Today we'll be talking about the future. How cryptos evolved in the past few years is nothing short of astonishing. Blockchains went from enabling peer-to-peer -peer transfer of value to being able to host decentralized financial and cultural ecosystems living within dApps, DAOs and NFTs. While those protocol and product innovations kept on evolving, the industry has been playing catch up in terms of accessibility and of course, security. And it's clear that for this space to be ready for prime time, these two elements have to be addressed. At Ledger, we're aware of that. Actually, some major changes have been in the making to grow from being an essential hardware that secures your private keys to becoming the safest gateway to Web3 services. The good news is that some of you out there can contribute to that. And this is exactly what we're about to discuss. To do so, I'm glad to welcome for the first time on the show, coming straight from Sao Paulo, Rodrigo Carrezzi, Ledger's head of developer relations. Rod recently left Google to come to Paris and join Ledger's Web3 adventure. Rod, welcome to On The Ledger. How are you, my friend? Uh, now I'm very, very excited. Uh, I was a user of Ledger myself, listening to the podcast and participating here for the first time. Couldn't be better. <laughs> Man, it's a pleasure to have you. We'll be joined by none other than Ian Rogers. I can probably go on and introduce him for the rest of the episode, but I'll try and keep it simple. If there is one thing you need to know about Ian, is that the internet's his second home. He has been an early adopter and contributor to major web innovations. And now he's exploring the realms of Web3 as Ledger's chief experience officer. Ian, welcome back on the show. How are you feeling today? Thank you. I'm great. I'm, I'm here in Tallinn. It's a cold day in Tallinn. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll try to warm you up with that conversation. I'm excited to jam with you both. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get started. On the Ledger Season 2, Episode 6, Ledger Web3 Security and Accessibility. Here we go. So as usual, let's start with our not so stupid questions. Rod, what does it mean to be head of developer relations? Uh, well, in plain and simple English is to create opportunities for developers to learn, build and grow with us. That's pretty much my job. Okay, that's, that's straightforward. Ian, you know, Ledger is a hardware company. Uh, why does Ledger need developers? Look, I think, um, you know, Anything complex has been built on a on, on a on a on a platform, right? I mean, you know, I, I've I've been uh, I, I started a computer science program in 1990, and uh, you know that was my my introduction to, you know, to building on systems that someone else had already had already built. You know, I mean, all the time you hear people talk about like, oh, I built it from scratch, and I always want to say, you did? Did you? Did you fab a chip? Did you build an operating system? Did you write a programming language? Did you write a compiler? Like, no, of course you didn't. Like, we're always, you know, we're always building on on uh, on on the back of work that has been done by someone else previously. I don't I don't care if you're you know if you're the Rolling Stones or you're Vitalik Buterin, but we're all building on, you know, this this kind of corpus of of you know human knowledge and and in in the case of of engineering, you know, really you know work that's come before us whether that's you know physical sciences or code you know that we're, we're we're always doing that um i think the greatest things that have ever been built online have uh, have have on the internet have been built as you know platforms and and ecosystems and you know what we're building at ledger is you know we're we're, we're building something which is which is a horizontal and what i mean by that is you know the same way that uh you know that 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 the platforms, whether it's operating systems or um, you know some of the some of the greatest things that that were built during the internet age were horizontals that other people could build on top of, and they could build their vertical on top of that. You know, the, the ledger party is kind of the only the only party in crypto where everyone is invited. You know, all chains, all coins, all apps, um, but we can't build that ourselves. Um, that's crazy. That's just not possible. Um, and also, even if we did, we wouldn't be the best at it. You know, these communities are the are the best at building for for what they um, care most about, and they have their own priorities and their own roadmaps. So, what we need to do is to provide the primitives that give access to what we're best at. Um, you know, which is which is securing 
um, digital assets, but then you know build a platform so other people can 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 build on top of that. So at Ledger, we have really three different layers of of places where you can build. One is to build an application um, on the Nano itself, so that it, the Nano supports more things than it than it um, you know than it than it supports out of the box. It'll support more things tomorrow than it does today. That's the that's the promise and the guarantee. Um, and then within Ledger Live, you know, if I have assets, I need to be able to see them, uh, send them, understand my value in them, et cetera. And Ledger Live is an open source piece of software that allows anyone to do that. And then we also now have uh, effectively a DApp browser inside of Ledger Live, where you know you can you can interact with um, you know applications, you know, so you can do things with your with your digital assets. And then additionally. Um, you know, you there are there are the, all the ways that you can use your ledger with things outside of, of of Ledger, whether it's MetaMask or or Kepler or Zerion or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, the, the you know, sorry for the the long answer, but that's that's the overview in terms of like why we do it and how we do it. It makes absolute sense. Um, so we'll dive more into that, but first I want to take a step back and as I briefly mentioned in the introduction. Space is in need of uh, secure and easy access to Web3 services. And Ian, you know, as a chief experience officer, I think this is your main focus. Uh, so what's your vision with regards to solving this industry friction and, and actually making this whole space ready for prime time? It's, 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 such, a, it's such a great question. And I, to me, it's this, this proof that we are at this stage where digital assets are a promise more than they're a reality. And, you know, please don't take offense when I say that, because I'm not saying that, that, you know, they're, they're not a reality now. I'm saying that the reality that we're experiencing now is the tip of the iceberg in terms of, of what's coming. Um, I'm old. I already said that. Um, but I, what that means is that I remember, you know, 1998 very well when we saw the, we saw the promise of the internet, but it wasn't here yet. The internet was slow. Um, there was a bubble. There was, you know, but we knew it was going to change humanity. We knew it. Um, I feel like we're at that same phase right now where there are a ton of incredibly exciting things going on, um, you know, but but it's still just a promise. And and I'll, I'll tell you, you know, security is the biggest sign of that for me. You know, I look at the volume on OpenSea, you know, more than a billion in transaction volume on a monthly basis. And then I look at the fact that not a single person has ever traded securely on OpenSea and my brain wants to explode. I'm like, wait, wait. So the only way that anyone is operating with OpenSea today is either with a software wallet. And I'm sorry, but if you are using a software wallet only, that's idiotic. No apologies. Actually, sorry, not sorry. It's just not smart. Um, if your assets are, you know, say worth more than $60, um, please invest in a $60 hardware wallet. Um, and you know, even when people are using hardware wallets, which is smarter, you're still blind signing. You're clicking through contract data that you can't read as a human being. And so when I, when I see that that's where we are, that goes, oh, wow, I'm, we're really early. And the reality here is that, you know, you can't protect Web3 value with Web2 hardware. That's a that's a fact. Um, and we don't really yet have the tools to do everything that we want to do with digital assets, um, you know, and, 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 and to your question, Mo, to do it easily. Right. Um, so even, you know, I mean, like I, I, I dare you to, you know, take your dad and get him to the point where he has some Ethereum in his wallet and he can trade on OpenSea. Okay, and now please tell me that he's doing that securely. Um, and I'll also tell you, um, you know, as as we as we talk, but hopefully not when this is released. You know, MetaMask plus Ledger doesn't work as well as it should. Okay, so that, there there you go. Like there there are many things that are just broken um, in this ecosystem. Still, they will get fixed. Um, you know, I, again, like I said, I'm old. I remember writing you know applications for a flip phone. Um, you know, pre, pre, you know, back in sort of 2002 time period, you know, we knew that there was going to be mobile internet, um, but it wasn't there, right? I feel like that's where we are. I, I know that this digital asset, you know, world is a reality. I know that NFT is a primitive the same way web page is a primitive, but we're not really there yet. 
right? When my only options are, you know, have a pretty good experience with NBA Top Shots where the Fiat on ramp, where I'm now in a walled garden that feels a lot like America Online, or my choices are, you know, struggle with, um, you know, kind of security and an interaction between, you know, OpenSea, MetaMask, and Ledger. Whew, okay, this feels a lot like the, you know, 2003 uh, mobile web to me. Um, you know, I'm having flashbacks. So, you know, that is why my title is chief experience officer, because, you know, when you buy an Apple iPhone, you're, you're not buying, um, you know, a piece of hardware, you're buying into the entire Apple ecosystem and the Apple experience, right? Well, that, that's, that's where we're going with Ledger, you know, where your, your Ledger plus Ledger Live plus that DAP, it's just seamless, right? If you do, you can actually experience that today, use Paraswap inside of Ledger. Um, inside of Ledger Live. There you go. You know, I didn't have to connect a wallet. I didn't have to worry about security. Um, I'm, 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 I'm clear signing. I'm not blind signing. Like there it is. Like when you, when you use that, then you, that's the aha moment where you go, ah, I see where this is going. Um, you know, so we've got a, we've got a lot of, a lot of work to do to get there, but, um, I think, you know, it's a great question. Improving those experiences is, is, you know, the, the, the number one thing we think about every day, but, we have a long way to go. Hopefully by the time this podcast is released, as an example, the, you know, MetaMask has been updated to work better with Ledger. There you go. This is like, <laughs> this is just like the nuts and bolts, like the work that we have to do every way to, every day to make this better. Oh, absolutely. And I love the example you gave about trying to actually get my dad to do it because I did and it didn't work. So I think that would be a good test. Once my dad can, can transact on Ethereum, we know that we did a good job. Rod, to Ian's earlier point, um, actually Ian did mention the three levels of integrations that we have at Ledger, uh, but it seems that today the, there is an upgrade in the types of integrations that we're focusing on. Um, and um, first of all, maybe you could walk us through, uh, for those uninitiated, uh, these uh, three different levels again, and tell us about your current focus for different levels. Okay, okay. If you are a developer and you're just getting started, you just... First thing you need to do is bookmark developer.ledger.com. And there you're going to find the four different ways that you can uh, initiate your security journey with us. Uh, if you want to get your token listed, supported on Ledger, I would, I would say that's number one. Uh, number two, if you want to get your blockchain supported, also uh, same, well, pretty much same step. Uh, connect your wallet. Uh, Ian just just mentioned MetaMask, but nowadays we have like several other up wallets as well. And uh, again, if you want to help your users to become more secure, you just go there. And last but not least, Ledger Live applications. Recently, we've released a Discover section on Ledger Live, our software. So if you want to build an application for that and be creative, I would love to to hear more about it. Again, quick reminder, uh, token support, blockchain support, wallet connect, and Ledger Live applications. Those are the four types of integrations that we are currently supporting, and there's more to come. So make sure you subscribe to our newsletter so you don't miss our announcements. Okay. Yeah, and I, I just want to say, like, first of all, thank you, Rod. I, Rod, Rod joined us recently um, to lead this and and really to upgrade our interaction with the developer community as well. I mean, you know, Ledger has gone from being a small company uh, to a bigger company, still not big, but big, bigger. And, you know, what we know is that we we need to be great at serving developers. And, and I don't think that we've always been the best in the past, just because we've had too few employees to really, um, you know, be perfect in, in, you know, and be able to talk to everybody who wanted to talk to us, frankly. Um, so certainly, and you look at the number of plugins that are available on the Ledger Nano and, and you know, the vast majority of them were developed by third party developers. So obviously we, we do have a, a vibrant developer community. But, you know, my opinion is that we could do, you know, still do even better uh, serving that community. And, and so we're Rod, I'm super happy that, that, that you're with us now to, to lead this. And I hope for, you know, for any developers that are listening um you know you you can feel that that you know we care a lot the the documentation is improving the communication is improving the community is growing and again i won't like like give a spoiler alert but you know commu the the community is is changing and and growing so and anyway i just want to say like 
I, I don't I, I want to be clear that I don't think we've been even close to to, to perfect in the past. And, um, you know, I, I suppose we'll never be perfect going forward, but we're, we're investing a lot in, in, uh, in developer relations and, and Rod is, is the, uh, is the leader of that world now. Yeah, definitely. Um, and let me kind of drill down on what you said, Rod, with another question. So the coin part, the blockchain part and the wallet part is straightforward. Everyone would understand why they would want to integrate with Ledger, uh, with regards to that, but the DAP and app part, um, what kind of problems does it solve solve for the developer, but also as well as a, the end user benefits? How would you like crystallize these benefits uh, for both parties? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, for our users, this means more possibilities, more possibilities for you inside Ledger Live with Ledger. So you know you're secure. You're not trading securely for UX. It's everything under the same roof, per se. And for developers, I think that's just an amazing opportunity to scale their own projects, to be known, gain more awareness. As of right now, we have very few applications. So if you want to talk with a 4 million uh, active user base, I think that could be a, a good thing. And last but not least, like honestly, uh, trading security for UX, I don't think that's a trade-off at all. So for all developers that are just getting started, just please talk to us. Uh, I can walk you through all those four different types of integrations because if your users are, are being hacked or blind signing, that's no good for, for anyone. Great. Yeah. And, and can I, Mo, you mind if I, if I, I'm going to, I'm sorry, there's this like, no I, worries. I, I, please. This, this, like, I'm so excited about this that I, it's hard for me not to, not to like, kind of give a, a bit of a historical perspective and where I think this fits in, in, in like, you know, the canon of, of, of developer platforms. It's not small in, in, in my view, you know, just, a, just again, you know, from, from a background perspective, you know, one of the most exciting things that I've ever had a chance to work on was Winamp and Winamp was great because it was incredibly simple and it had this great, um, you know, plugin and skin platform. So, you know, we had, 50,000 skins and 5,000 plugins for Winamp in 1999. And, you know, by, by being that, that, that to me is, is where I saw the power of a platform. You know, we were four people at Nullsoft and, you know, we had an audience of tens of millions and we had, you know, again, 50,000 skins and 5,000 plugins developing on that platform. And that to me showed me like a team of four people can do a ton of damage when you, when you have, when you, when you have, you know, people, when you're providing value in a way that people work with you. When I build a product at Yahoo called the Yahoo Music Engine, um, which you know never never was a popular product for a, a whole bunch of reasons that that I'm happy to to uh, to write in my memoirs, um, but the the platform was interesting. Our our, our goal was to build a media player. Um, we basically wanted to build iTunes where everything that you see in the left tray is a plugin. Right. That was that was what the Yahoo Music Engine was, was, you know, what wait, what if all of the services that were here were not like owned by Apple? They were owned by developers and developers could put whatever they wanted to in there. Now, I'm going to argue that Web3 is broken. Connect your wallet. And I when I click connect, I get this paradox of choice, which asks me, which insecure wallet would you like to connect to this website? Right. Oh, wow. Wait, this is the future. Are, are you are you kidding me? Like, like that is, that is web three today, right? Now, what happens when I, when I view that, that web page in, inside of Ledger Live? Oh, wait, guess what? I'm already connected to the most secure wallet on the planet. Not that other wallet that you can steal the keys off of if you hit it with a laser because they don't use a secure element. Not that one. No, the Ledger wallet, which actually uses a secure element and is actually secure, and I'm already connected. There's no connect dialogue. Again, just go into Paraswap inside of Ledger Live, and you'll, and you'll see what I mean. And now I can transact securely using, you know, with, with self-custody in a hardware wallet and clear signing. This is it, guys. Like, this is, this is you know, to be honest, you know, if, if, you, are, if, if you are doing anything less than that, then, I, you know, a, then it's less, it's lesser, uh, you know, frankly, you know, having, having a, I'm, oh, I'm using software only wallet. Oh, I'm blind signing. Like, no, like this is, um, you know, not, not, um, what I would recommend. Uh, so, so anyway, I, I think that, you know, the, the kind of 
the DAP ecosystem inside of Ledger Live is, is totally transformative in the way that WeChat was totally transformative for a billion people in China. I think it's transformative for, for Web3. Uh, Rod, Ian um, kind of mentioned the differences between, you know, the Web 2 and Web 3 and how, how Web 3 should evolve. You come from uh, seven years of experience developing, uh, you know, initiatives uh, with developers for Google. What can you tell us about that experience and how is it any different from the one you're currently living? Well, it was uh, by far my biggest school. Um, there are a lot of differences. I think the main one is the number of developers that already know how to work on both webs. Uh, according to the last research that I did, uh, we currently have 18 million developers for Web2 at the moment and 110,000 Web3 devs. I'm pretty sure this number will, will change pretty quickly. But uh, that being said, there's a lot of onboarding to do and a lot of education to do in order for those developers to really understand the APIs, SDKs, and the frameworks that are being built. So that's why I'm attending two conferences this week to meet developers, um, know where they are, what they're working on, and and pretty much partner, learn from them, and see how we can work together. Interesting. And Ian, um, you know, you've been you've been at the forefront of the digital evolution, leading companies such as Yahoo, Beats, Apple Music, LVMH, to name a few. Uh, today, it feels like the decentralized web is disrupting that top-down model of innovation. Um, what do you think successful Web3 companies will have to, you know, will have to play in general in order to be, you know, uh, very disruptive with regards to that? What, what, what's the main role that they'll have to play to be successful? Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a great question. I mean, I, I think it's, I think it's incredibly broad. I, I think that, um, you know, there's going, you know, again, as I said earlier, N NFT is just a, is just, is a, just a primitive the same way that web page um, was a primitive. So I think that, that the, um, you know, it's, it's, it's really wide open. You know, we just have this, we have this, you know, new capability, which is, which is digital scarcity. And it's going to take, you know, so many different forms that I, I think it's hard to say. That's sort of like asking, you know, what does an internet company, you know, need to do in, in 1998, right? I mean, they're, 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 it's, it's completely, it's a, it's a wide open field. Um, I think it's much easier to kind of ask the question, you know, what are these kind of traditional, whether they're, they're web two or even, you know, companies that aren't really web companies like LVMH, you know, what do they need to do? here and I, and I think that that the, they need to jump in as quickly as possible and experiment you know I'm, I'm, I'm talking to the companies that I work with um, every day like LVMH uh, I'm on the board at Dr. Martin's and you know the, the, the question is like what you know what role do we have to play um, in, in this world and, and that's what I, I think is exciting you know I, I look at um, a project like loot and what I see is you know um, the I see a video game from the 80s which ultimately will be, you know, what's the Grand Theft Auto version of that of that game, you know, and and um, so that's what's exciting to me is that we really are at the very beginning, where where people are are just kind of, um, you know, really scratching the surface of of what's possible here. But I think this disrupts, you know, absolutely every industry, um, you know, not just financial ones, but you know, maybe 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 banks first and and everyone else, you know, to follow. Uh, but I, I just think that, that, that we, we, we have no idea. It's really like asking, you know, what are the implications of the Internet in 1998? Like a lot of us can 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 dream, um, you know, but there were tons of things that happened that we that we didn't envision. I think that, you know, I'll just give you a personal example. We, you know, in 2002, we knew that the world was going to move to subscription music. Um, that was a very unpopular view. Um, frankly, the entire music business disagreed with us uh, in 2002. Um, but we couldn't have predicted that the iPhone would come in 2008 and we couldn't have predicted that this company from Sweden with a green logo would, would, would matter at all. Like that was just completely unpredictable. And I, and I would say that I'm certain the same things are, are lurking out there now. I think all of those of us who believe, you know, that, that, that Web3 is going to disrupt everything are probably right. Um, but if we, you know, wrote down all of our predictions, we'd probably still be 80% wrong. Um, that's, that to me is the exciting part. Definitely. And. Let me let me try that from another angle. So it's been almost a year that you joined Ledger, uh, and what a year it has been. Um, where do you see Ledger in five years? That's a that's a an, another great question. I mean, I think that look in any industrial transformation, you have an unbundling and a and a rebundling. You know, and and again, drawing on my past, you know, we had compact discs. They were unbundled into ninety nine cent downloads, and then ultimately they were rebundled into um, 
you know, in, into into music subscriptions or or videos were unbundled into YouTube and rebundled into Netflix and Hulu or however you want to look at it, right? It's you could, it's it's normal. We have an unbundling now. You have your Web two hardware, and you have your Web three hardware, right? You have you right right now. If you know what you're doing in in the world of crypto, then you, in addition to your phone, you have your hardware wallet. You have your ledger, right? Um, you know, over the next five years, though, there there will be many ways that those are rebundled um, into you know more secure devices. Um, there's a great book came out earlier this year uh, called "This Is How They Tell Me the World Ends," and if you haven't read it, you have to read it. Um, it'll change your life. Um, it'll definitely change your perspective. It's impossible. I mean, I even knew most of the stories in the book already, but still, the book not only changed my perspective, but told me that this notion is coming into the mainstream. And I think if you ask many people a year ago, hey, uh, how would you like a phone with less functionality but more security? They would have said, what? Why do I want that? Now, I think, you know, many of us are understanding the world and, and, and you know, the risks of online world more. And I think there are a lot of people now who just said, look, if my phone didn't do Facebook, but it did protect my assets uh, protect my mail and protect my photos. Yeah, I want that. Right. Um, so I, I think that, you know, I, I imagine a world where, you know, our, our, you know, our, our devices become more and more secure. And I imagine ledger at the forefront of that world. That's what we all hope for. Uh, Rod, um, speaking of the future, um, what are your future plans for adding value and building bridges with these developers? I hear that there is a conference that's about to take place soon. Is that right? Yeah, that's about right. It's called Ledger Open. It's our very first developer conference made by our own developers for our developer community. And it's going to be a great way. It's going to be happening in December in Paris. We're going to have more than 25 speakers, two days, 250 attendees from all over the world. And uh, it's going to be a pretty cool chance for uh, us, well, for me to meet most of them in person for the first time. And also to talk about our platforms, our plans, our roadmaps, and how they could help us build a better Web3 world. Yeah, excited. Absolutely excited about this one. Ian, would you have anything to add about Ledger Open? I mean, I, I think, you know, from, from my perspective, it's if this is the event where we all come together, like I said earlier, you know, Ledger is kind of, Ledger is one of the only parties in crypto where everyone's invited right i mean you know we've got bitcoin miami we've got you know ecc we've got uh you know nft nyc we've got you know there are lots of lots of great parties in crypto don't get me wrong um but you know ledger is a horizontal like i said and and really literally everyone is invited uh so i think that you know the the opportunity for developers from all across the space to come together and to focus on something which we all believe there's value in, which is security. Um, you know, when when I think you no, know, no matter no matter what it is that you care about inside of the in, inside of the world of digital assets, when when people lose their digital assets for whatever reason, lost, stolen, whatever, we all lose. We all lose. You know, we we all want this space to move forward. We all and and. And so therefore, I think it's, you know, something that we can all like agree in and feel, feel good about no matter, you know, no matter, you know, what, what kind of um, project you are, you know, fully backing, you know, no matter which, you know, no matter where your distribution of assets sits, security matters to you in, in the world of digital assets. And so from my perspective, you know, Ledger Open is that, that place where everyone, um, you know, developing in, in this world gets to come together and focus on that thing, which is, you know, keeping our digital assets secure and pushing this entire industry forward as a result. That's, uh, that's a great way uh, to transition to our last segment of the show. This is tips for developers. So Rod, um, if I'm a developer and I want to integrate with Ledger, what should I do? Uh, how do I communicate with you? Um, what resources do I access and, and yeah, how do, I, how do I kickstart my, my ledger journey? Great. First you bookmark, if you didn't already, the le developer.ledger.com. That's the most important website to talk with us and, and get all our repos, all the trainings, all the necessarily uh, documentations for you to integrate with us. And pretty soon, and I'm pretty safe to say this at the end of this podcast, 
uh, we are going to be launching our very first Discord server. So not only myself, but pretty much all the tech and eng and product teams are going to be there. So a place for you to meet us, talk with us, participate on trainings, office hours, workshops, and a place for us to invite our developer community as well to show what they're working on. So stay tuned for more. I, I guess this was my biggest update for today. Yeah, it's a great update. I think we've all been waiting for this chord. Um, it's been great chatting with you both. Would you have any last thoughts that you want to share with the developers community or with the community in general? I would just say join us. I mean, I think, you know, Rod, thank you for 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 finally, you know, migrating us to the world of Discord. Um, you know, better better late than never. And uh, you know, join us. We're here, we're here. Perfect way to end it. It's been a pleasure chatting with you as usual. And uh and yeah, yeah. Looking forward to having you both on the podcast once again soon. Very soon, I hope. Anytime, my friend. This was great. Thanks for having us and thanks for doing what you do, Mo. That's it. If you've enjoyed this and want to learn more on how you can build with Ledger, don't hesitate to head to Ledger's developers portal. You'll find plenty of resources to help you kickstart your journey and bring security to your community. This was On The Ledger from Paris with your host, Mo Sayed. Till next time, take care. Au revoir. This content is provided for informational purposes only and is the sole expression of our opinion and should not be relied upon as legal, business, investment or tax advice. Do your own research, any loss or profit is your sole responsibility. Stay safe.